Hey, hey developers, today we're gonna look at Element UI, which is a Vue 2.0 based component library for developers like you and me. So we are gonna set up Element UI. We're going to kind of take a look at the different components that it offers and maybe kind of compare and contrast that to other frameworks, other view component frameworks out there and talk about some of the differences. And one thing you might notice right away is that Element is really international focused. When you install it, you can pick between Chinese, English, and a bunch of different languages. It feels like this is a much more international component framework, if that makes sense, rather than some of the more US-based ones. So if that is important to you, you may want to definitely check out Element UI. So make sure you stay all the way end, all the way to the end and learn all about it. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you like these types of videos, make sure you smash that like button. Don't break your keyboard, but smash it. Hit that thumbs up. And if you don't like it, hit the thumbs down. I, I'm okay either way. I really appreciate your feedback and leave a comment below letting me know what UI framework you use. So we're gonna jump into the screencast, let's go. All right, so I already have an app that I created which I'm gonna go ahead and close that. I don't have, I haven't actually installed Element UI, so I just wanna kinda of give you an overview of it first. So as the name suggests, it's a desktop UI library. Um, it's pretty well done, the guides, components, themes, it has a lot of resources for it. So let's take a look at the guide first. So they call it, uh, they say it has lots of consistency, feedback, efficiency, and controllability. Um, that's the design principles of it. It also has a lot of different uh, navigation. You can, looks like you can do tab navigation, side navigation, very interesting. I think the, the best part of Element UI is the amount of components it has. I think it has 86 different components, which is quite a bit. I also wanna say, before I get in, that it feels like Element um, has a lot of international contributors. So I'm here in the United States, but it looks like it has a really big presence overseas in China and, and other parts of the world. So that's great, that's awesome. Um, so if that's a concern of yours, that that you want a UI library, maybe a little bit more international, and, um, this is definitely the one for you. Not saying that the other libraries aren't, but that's what I kind of feel about this one. I mean, internationalization is one of the key points right at the beginning, because it has a lot of, it looks like uh, you can change the default language of element is Chinese. So if you want to do another language, you'll need to do some um, some configuration on it, which is, that's fine. I know Vuedify and others, I think the default language is English. So to get started, there's a couple of ways, and I prefer the one using the plugin system. So if you click this link here, and by the way, these links will be in the description below, this is all you need to do is really do this view add element. So I'm gonna do that inside my app, view add element. And this should go ahead and install the plugin for, for Element, so let's take a moment. Okay, so it's giving asking us some questions here. Is do we want to fully import or import on demand? Uh, just for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna just do fully import. And do you want to overwrite? No, we're not gonna overwrite anything. And cool, so it asks us right from the beginning what locale we want. So I told you that it is very international. It has a big Chinese following, So, but we are English, so we're gonna use EN for English, and this will just take a moment to install. I just wanna take a moment and thank our sponsor, Dot Tech Domains. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably love domain names and you love to buy ones that are short and relevant, but also most importantly, available. And that's what's really cool about Dot Tech Domains. There's a ton of really cool domains available and the Dot Tech Domain is broad enough that you can kind of understand that this is technology related as well. A lot of really cool sites are using .tech domains like Hollywood.tech, Viacom.tech, even personal sites like AustinEvans.tech. So if you guys are interested and you wanna search for a really cool domain name, go to go.tech slash Eric and then search for your domain name. If you end up buying it, you actually get up to 80% off on one year and five year domains. So go to go.tech slash Eric and go ahead and pick up that domain name, thanks. Okay, cool. So it went ahead and set it up for us in English, so we don't have to worry about that. So we could see, kind of take a look at what it created. It created a plugins folder in this element.js file. You can see this is where they put in the localization for EN for English. So that's perfect. That's what we needed. And then it made some changes to the app view file and the main.js file. So 
looks like it added in this plugins and made sure that the plugins was loaded correctly. So I think we're ready to run, go ahead and run it and see what it looks like. While this is starting up, let's take a look at what Element provides us out of the box. Now, of course, we can always customize everything. We can customize our default color scheme if we wanted to. You can overwrite the element variables.scss file or create a new style file called this element variable um, sass file and then put in your own file, your own colors if you want. It also has, you can install theming. So you can install this element.theme and you can have different themes, which is really neat. I wonder if they're, I'm sure if we looked closely enough, we could find what all the different themes are. And that gives us different color schemes for it. And it has some built-in transitions, which is kind of neat. We can look in the transition documents. So if we look in the left-hand side here, this is all the different components. Like I said, there's quite a few of them. I want to say there's over 80 of them. And so this is almost as big as, as Vutify, maybe even a little bit bigger. In fact, if you go to Vutify's website, I'm going to go to Vutify. I was just looking up some stuff on Parallax. They actually have on their front page, which is really amazing that they're so transparent, how they compare to other UI frameworks for Vue. And they say that Element UI has 86, while Vutify only has 82. But Element UI doesn't have full accessibility. It also doesn't have long-term support, and tree shaking is manual. So when we set it up, we actually did a full import, so I think we have everything. So it sounds like we probably, if we were using this in production, we'd want to just import the ones that we want. I, you know, as for this, there's, um, as for the components, there's just tons, obviously typography, having Chinese supports, really important. Has borders, buttons. I think buttons are a good example of just what you can do. So I'm gonna expand this. And you can see you use this EL-row, and that's the column layout. Let's see that. I, I think there's a whole section on the columns. Let's see here. If we look, column, layout, column spacing. Yeah, you can kind of see it has similar to this 12 column layout that you see in a lot of these other frameworks. You can also use, um, you can have different viewports by assigning different kind of utility classes, it looks like. So that way it doesn't show up in different different sizes, will show up differently. I guess you just add them as attributes inside your EL columns. So here's like the basic layout. If we expand it here, you could do this EL-row and then you put the span. So let's see if this let's see if this will work. I'm gonna copy and paste this first before we go into our buttons. So we don't need that many of them to make sure our app works. Okay, so we are running right now. By the way, let's open it up in localhost 8080 and take a look. Cool, so here's, oh, even has EL button right here. Element is successfully added to this project. So we're gonna be kinda lazy and just edit the Hello World app here. And I'm going to make this a little smaller. So this will just take a moment, let's see here. And you know, have a div tag in here. Here's our EL rows. Okay, they're all nicely formatted. Cool, so elements successfully added. Let's see if, do we have any data in here? I guess we have to actually type something in some of these columns. Let's see if we save it. All right, so here's that. Let's try the buttons to see if it's working. I'm not. I'm not sure if it is. Oops. Okay, cool. So yep, yep, these are working correctly. Let's go into, let's clean this up a little bit. We'll go into our main, f well, let's go to our app view file. And you can see here that has this paragraph tag. Delete the image. I'm gonna delete the EL button here. Cool, so now I have our primary success, I have all our buttons showing up. So we go back to our hello world. You can see we just put a type in and then this makes the different colors, which is nice. What else can we do here? Um, let's take a look at input boxes. I think this is a pretty normal. 
I mean, these are pretty generic looking input boxes. But you can also, nice thing about the documentation, it tells you there's a ton of attributes you can put on it. Min, lent, max, length, clearable, disabled, rows, auto, resize, read only. And then it obviously hooks up to, you can have different slots in there, input elements. Let's try a slider instead. It's kind of neat. So we can always click expand here and kind of grab one and add it to our app. So we added a slider. See if it shows up. There it is. Here's our slider. Kind of works default. Looks pretty easy. Um, nice. Uh, let's try. Let's see the select drop down. All right. It kind of has a, like a little bit of an animation to it. Makes it nice. So here is the select. Let's just try that out. And now I have to actually add an options with a key of value. So let me see here. I'm going to have to add some stuff. Oh, here it is. So let me add this return and this options. So I'm going to create, oh, we'll just go ahead and copy and paste it all from the data object on. Okay, now we have a data object. And I'll just fix this prettier error. Okay, there it is. So let's take a look. Cool, here's our select dropdown. Uh, looks like it defaults to not being um, on top of each other, which is interesting. I wonder if there's a setting for that. Oops, actually I found out the issue. Uh, some of the CSS code here was doing an inline block and it was causing it to show incorrectly. So that's why it showed horizontally instead of vertically. So now here it is. So now it's working as it's supposed to with a little bit of an animation which makes it look nice. Um, maybe we'll look at one more. This date picker looks kind of interesting but I bet it's pretty involved. But it looks like, I know it's not too bad. You can, in the return options, you do the picker options, shortcuts. Yeah, it's, it's pretty long but I'll just show it to you guys through here. There's this full calendar option. You can select different dates. You can have uh, you can have a minimum and maximum date, which is kind of neat. Let's take a look at forms. So lots of different form options here. Um, inline forms has whole tables inside here, which you just use el table, and you can actually add the table data has pagination, has badges. How does these badges work? It looks like these are pretty easy. Um, let's, let's add a badge to our app here. Add it to the top. Cool, here's our little badge. We can put 12 here, so the way that works, it looks like you use el-badge, you can put the value in, and then the class equals item, and then size, you, I guess you could do small. Um, and comments. So let's see if we put large. Okay, so yeah, that makes it definitely larger. So I think there's a handful of classes, like utility classes, that you can use. Let's take a look. Class. Yeah, there's different attributes and classes that you can use to make. Here's some utility classes for the basic layout grid. Um, yeah, here's, yeah, we talked about this earlier about the utility classes. Yeah, you just probably have to look through here to find out which ones there are. Here's the themes, by the way. Um, here's the element theme, the default theme, but looks like you could upload your own if you wanted. That's interesting. All right, I, th I think that's all I'm going to show you guys today. You know, I think this is definitely worth checking out to see if this is what you like and if this is something you want to pull into your project. Like I said, uh, it has so, it has 86 different components. So lots of different things you can do here. Um, if you And if internationalization is really important to you, it looks like that's a big priority of these guys. So yeah, check it out. Thanks, let me know what you think below.